Welcome to Around Town. Talking about what's going on in the greater Concord area. And if I'm your host, Dick Patton, and as you know, school is now started. The, the school bells are ringing, and uh, I just, I just, and my special guest today is Jack Dunn, who is the business administrator for the Concord Union School District, and I just can't believe it. You know, when we went to school, and I know I'm talking eons ago, especially as I, my, I had my father's home movies. Um, there were eight millimeters. Yep. My, actually, my uncles put onto a disc. Yep. And my gosh, to see us kids in the third, second game grades over here at Dame School. But you know, it takes you back because we never started until the Wednesday after Labor Day. And we had one day off for teachers convention in October, and that was it. Yep. And now the governor has got into it and said, I don't think I'm planning a proclamation to establish a commission about it. And I think he's right. Yeah. There's no need of starting before now. I mean, really, you go one day, from what I understand, the upper class can go today, Correct. then they're off tomorrow. Correct. Along with the other grades. The other yep. grades have been there for yep. Wednesday and Thursday. Correct. How foolish is that? Freshman, really? Freshmen started Wednesday, and then freshmen and upperclassmen today, and then, yep, that's it. The high school. How foolish, though, really. So. And, you know, and, of course, and then, of course, you get the other thing with the band camp, the football practice, soccer, I and mean, this hot, this hot weather. Yep. And then you get, you hear about these players dying in practice. I mean, there's a real mess going on in Maryland about it, and uh, there's been others, too, in the last few years that died in this heat. I mean, you think the coaches would know, I mean, it's bad enough for the professionals, but but for the, uh, um, what do you call it, the, uh, for, for the uh, students, it's like, what gives? Yeah. I don't know whether they're calling practice or not. I know my son, for soccer, they had called. Uh, they didn't have any practice for it's that. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Tuesday, because it was too hot. It's ridiculous. So, today, today is a little cooler, but... Uh, not much. Not much. Tomorrow, I think next maybe. week's going to be hot. Oh, saying. yeah. See, no, so, no, I know. I said back up in the 90s, what, Monday, Tuesday, whatever? I think it's just grand enough to be a rough winter. I hope not. But, you know, when I would, when we were in school, of course, we always went Wednesday after Labor Day. And, you know, you had that kind of cool spell around Labor Day. But the minute you went back to school, it got hot, mm -hmm. you know. And then, of course, finally, after around the second or third week of September, when fall started, mm -hmm. started to cool down a little bit. Then you get that warm weather again in October. Yeah. And uh, but a lot of those are all those schools air conditioned now. No, the only ones that are air conditioned are the three new ones. Yeah. So it, but I, I shouldn't say they're air conditioned. They're not. They're called dehumidified air. It's not air conditioning. I mean, it's got to be unbearable up on that thir third floor at, at Runlet or the third floor at Plunkett High School. Yeah. Second floor at Runlet. It's hot in that building. It is warm. Yeah. But, uh, they'll get through it. They open up the windows and cool the building at night best they can. And then you figure going outside for a gym or whatever, yeah. you know, is, I don't know, I just can't believe it. I mean, even when we were in grammar school or elementary, it was it was warm, and uh, of course we went out aside for recess, but but we didn't have you know physical education only once a week or once every two weeks. But I don't know. How do you think that's going to affect? Do you think if that goes through, with Concord will change it, go back to the original? Well, I've seen the, the governor announce that, but I don't know if he's going to wade in and force every school district to to change, but. It's already, it does dictate what happens because of the regional technical center. We have nine different sending districts. So when we set our calendar in December, that's really what helps them set their calendar. That's why they're anxious to know um, because they have to coordinate when their kids are bused to us. So it becomes a domino effect. So it would be um, difficult. I know for me growing up down south, we always started 
the, said the Wednesday after Labor Day. Yeah. Never started before that. I mean, it was different coming up here and seeing that. I but. mean, Cole Brown, I mean, started I think, a week ago at least, or maybe two, I don't know, because they get out at the end of May. But, or in the Midwest, they start around August 14th. They but start early. I know in Florida, they started last week down in Jacksonville, but, um, but I'm telling you, I just don't get it because Again, but of course, all these teacher conferences mm -hmm. they have during the year. Yeah. Well, it's that, and you, uh, up here, which I, we didn't have, is this winter break. We had spring break, but we didn't have this winter break that happens up here. That was an anomaly to me. Wow. So, but that's something that's they just do up here. So we always had back before Congress got playing with the holidays. We always had the last week of February as our winter break. Because Washington's birthday was the fourth Monday of February. Then April was the spring break. Well then one time they got the idea of combining them together and having one in March, late March. Mm -hmm. And that didn't work. People really complained about that so then they went back to the separate weeks again. But I mean, I graduated on July on June thirteenth, and so that was basically. But you know, I don't know. We didn't have too many days, but like last year, there was seven snow days. Yeah. Yeah. Because they were supposed to get out that Friday, right? And it went a whole other, a whole additional five days. What but Friday? seven days. But because we had enough hours, we only needed to put five. For the, for the teachers because they have contract days. I brought in my mother's uh, yearbook, 1943. Wow. You know, and amazing how from Concord High School, all the yep. pitches and some of the teachers that were there then. And uh, you know, Concord High School, all the scoops. Doesn't there. look much different, does it? No. The doors are a little different, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. And uh, it was funny because of all the teachers in here, there were some. Well, Genevieve Ledoux was an English teacher when I was at Concord High. Mm -hmm. Well, that was in the late, mid '60s, late '60s. Wow. Well. You know, and uh, was there Earl Temple was. Um, um, well, he's here somewhere, but anyway, um, he was in here, and he was a prince, assistant principal. If I'm, oh, there's J. Richard Martin, who was a gym teacher at Runlet mm -hmm. when I went to in seventh grade. Oh, and he made himself to be principal? Or made it to be no, principal? he was print no, he was gym teacher in seventh grade up here well at Runlet, but he was up there at Clark High School. So he dropped down to the junior high. And there's William Ledoux, who was Genevieve's husband, he was he was still teaching when I went to school hospital at Clark High. So oh, very formal, huh? Oh even yeah. with the kids. Huh? How were the kids' pictures? Oh, pretty formal. Oh, yeah. yeah. You didn't see any Not of these, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. of course, World War II was on. And sure. Yeah. Then the clubs. Yeah. And the athletics and yeah. the music. And the band and all that. Glee Club, orchestra. So. Yeah. And then, of course, the famous Tide, 1970. That was my year. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was interesting to see some of the stuff that was, you know, how it had changed. And, uh, you know. There again, uh, some of those. And it's funny how many kids in that class have died. 1970, you know, but how the hairdos and all that stuff, and then the, then the uh, and we haven't had a reunion in years. And it's the teachers that we had back then. Of course, some of them have, died, have most of them have passed. He died in a motorcycle accident. Jim Hines. Oh yeah, there's uh, a stone for him. I mean, Bill Hines. Yep. And then Brandon Gray's pass. Frank Monahan, who was basketball coach at Concord High, uh, Brisha Brady, and Concord, he was my uh, business teacher. He died. Um, Anna Hagstrom just died within the last year or so. Well. And she lived across the street from Concord High School on North Fruit Street. You know, and um, some of these other ones. Huh? Of course, back then, moral school was separate. But they that was the trade school, right? No, that no. was a special needs school. Oh. 
on South Spring Street. Yep. And, uh, where they used to have your uh, offices. SAO, yeah. yeah. Yep. And um, most of these other ones, uh, oh, William Houston, he's still alive. Um, he was a industrial arts teacher. Um, then you got some of these other ones. Uh, most of these, I, I don't know if they're still living or not. She is. That's Hannah Lacey, who is now Hannah Lacey West, whose husband was John West, who taught English at Runlet, and he's passed away. But she's still living in Chichester. Um, you know, it's I, I don't know where a lot of these are. Um, Oscar Sarad lives around here in the Heights. He goes to this church. Oh, okay. He's still living. And, uh, oh, I don't know. Mr. Spears is in Connecticut. He's still alive. He, he was quite a, quite a boy. Mr. Silva lives on the Heights here on Dover Street. Yep. You know, he, was a, he taught economics. Michael Garrett, who was a, at one time an assistant principal up at Corner High, I believe, he was... Um, Owen Copang, he's he's still alive. He and his wife used to own the Viking House on Main Street. Um, now there's J. Preston Berry. He was the principal. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many years. Earl Temple, there he is. That's who was one of the assistants back in those days. He was in the class of '43 with as a teacher or somebody down there. And your guidance, I don't know if any of them. I assume some of them are still living, but you know you. When Mr. Conway passed, I said, I don't remember when Gene, when J. Preston, Preston Berry died. I don't remember having, I don't know how many years he was there, but um, it was, I, well, they did anything special for him, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember anything special. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many years he was even principal. Maybe you could find out sometime. Who was that? Prest J. Preston Berry. Mm -hmm. Do you have a little, can you find that out and who, how many print of the print? As a matter of fact, in the high school, um, one of the assistant principals um, did research of all the principals of the school. So that the first plaque is listed by name and what years they were there. Yeah. And then he, he has probably about 14 or 16 pictures. He goes back as far as he can with images. Hmm. But it, it lists everybody. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it would be right on the wall. Maybe they just did that in the last two years. Maybe you could I tell me I think they did sometime. that to commemorate Gene. Yeah, maybe you could tell me just who it was. I mean, that were because... Preston Barry, you said? J. Preston J. Barry. J. Preston Barry. Yep. And it's right, I'm sure it's right on the wall. So. Because I don't know when he, he, when he was. And, of course, Melville Brown was the assistant principal, along with Earl Temple. But... Richard Walsh was my guidance counselor in 10th grade. And Winifred Stein was my counselor in 12th grade. I don't remember who I had in 8th grade. Uh, 11th grade. But, you know, it's, it's just, it's interesting to see. Ed Sirico was uh, a coach for Clockett High School football. One of the coaches up there at that time. And, um, uh, it's just interesting to look back and see. You know, Grace Taylor, her son was in my class. Mm -hmm. She was my homeroom teacher in tenth grade up on the third floor. You know, so it's just I it's just looking back and seeing those teachers and think, boy, where are they now? Mm -hmm. You know. Jim Regan Reagan was bookkeeping. I had him in eleventh and twelfth grades. We're keeping one and two. He's in Florida, and he's not very well. But he is, he's in, he's in his late 80s, mm -hmm. and uh, nice guy, very nice guy for a teacher. Him and Anna Hagstrom, I think, were one of the, well, two of the nicest teachers. Mrs. McCarthy, Frances McCarthy, who I think now is a different last name. She lives over at Havenwood, Heritage Heights. But... What's the enrollment this year? Is it up, down, or, you know? It'll be a little bit down. A little Jackson. over 1,600. Yep. Now when you account Deerfield. In what about Concord High? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Concord High. Oh. If you're talking 
overall district yeah. because of the um, the kindergarten. There's some, some more. I think there's 20 more than we had uh, anticipated. But all in all, enrollment's but down. Is that, that full continues. time now? It's full time. It is yep. full time. Yep. Wow. I think Tuesday will be the first official day that they're all together. Wow. Because it was like split shifts Wednesday and then more kids came Thursday, something like that. Hmm. So, yeah, but that's in place now. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it's good. It's like Concord High. It's got 1,600 up there. Yeah, it's, I think it's a little over 1,600. Might be a little bit below 1,597. See, they when built... When you count Deerfield. There's like 1,400 of our kids. Really? Deerfield's got 200 here? They got about 170, so you take 170, so we've got, in my sense, say 1,450, 1,470 are probably um, ours. Well, like I told you once, I have relatives that were in Crockett High, and I didn't know it. But I never seen my cousin's kids. Yeah. All right, uh, Megan, let's see, Megan um, Menswaugh. She was in that class. She either got uh, either got graduated this year or last year. And there's a and there's Hunter Hoyt and Cody Hoyt. They're from they're in Deerfield. They're from Deerfield in Concord High. But I was not surprised. They love it. Oh, they loved going over there. But you know, there's been rumors that Pittsfield was thinking of giving up their high school and coming into Concord or something, but I haven't heard any more about that. Yeah. I right. think it was in the paper, but mm. that's it's tough. Can you, could, could you take another small school in there? Depends on how many kids. I mean, we had 1,900, a little over 1,900 in that building at one time. So conceivably, if Pittsfield's 230 kids, I'm, not, I'm just guessing based on what I vaguely recall if they're that that number. So you assume they could in. probably fit, but I don't what's there'd have to be a long process to What's going on, Jack, with the bullying up there and all that? Is that kinda is that there's a whole bullying policy and the board um um uh, I think they're just reviewing that again because there's always changes in legislation for those things. They're going through the whole policy book now and just upgrading everything. So that well, we got some policies from like 1968. I still say the worst 96. time of my life was in eighth, seventh, and eighth grades. That was the worst time. So that would have been around the junior high yep. school when it was seventh yep. and ninth. Yep. Yep. Okay. Seventh, eighth, and ninth. Yep. And so. to see them put the sixth grade up there, I think it was a mistake. But then, but then now, then I heard they were talking about putting the fifth grade, and I said that's really t foolish. That is too much. Well, if you were to if you were to build a new build, the building is up for, it's going to need work. I mean, oh, the roofs yeah. are all aging. Yeah. The building has had a lot of wear and tear. It's had three, four subsequent additions since 1957 when it was built. It's not the most efficient building. It well, was it's built a, as a junior high school, it's not, not as a middle school. It's not handicapped accessible, right? No, it is. All our buildings are. Yeah, it's all single floor. It's got so an elevator in it. There yeah. is elevator. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. when I went there, there was no elevator. But the yeah. problem is when you go and you renovate a building to mm. make changes, you got to bring everything up to code. Oh, yeah. Depending on the size of the thing. So that analysis was done. And, um, you know, if we keep the existing building and trying to make it a fifth grade or just keep it six, seven, and eight, it's an awful, it's a, it's a big expense. Mm. But um, then we looked at those same things with the elementary. You really got to consider what would a new building look like. What do you what do you gain from that? And yeah. Well, part of that is we're doing a demographic study, is to look at does it make sense to make it a five through eight school with the kindergarten coming up? It's tightened those buildings. The Millbrook School they moved the art room over to broken ground because there's not enough room in that building now. So, um, if you make it a five through eight, you re relieve pressure, and also if you design a new building. You can design them totally different than when they did it in 1957. They almost become like sub-schools. I mean, we do it with Millbrook and Broken Ground. We do autonomous schools, even though they're connected. This is very expensive to maintain them. I mean, everything today, uh, these, almost everything today you sign up for is some type of subscription. You know, you put heating and ventilation, there's a service contract. Things break. Um, it's the cost of energy and running those buildings. Uh, there's just it's a lot to it and if you take your home and just multiply it by 
good couple hundred. It's big. I mean, it, it adds up. It's all relative. That's the way I look at it. It's all relative see, from an expense standpoint. See, when I went to Clark at High, because they didn't have the addition up there. Right. None that of was it. athletic fields, right? Yeah. yeah. That was the, the track parking. there and everything, parking for the staff and yep. everything. Yep. And you had the bow students there then, too. Yep. They left, I think, in 97. So you had yeah, enough room school. then, yep. but then all of a sudden you got, they got rid of them. They, they didn't do the contract. So, you know, then there's this big addition. And it's like, wait a minute here. You know, what happened? All of a sudden they got no, they got less bow you know, the bow students are gone, but why do they need that big addition? You know, and how many uh, foreign exchange students have you got? It gives you future planning. But there was, the last list I, I got was there was a plan for five, mm. but you had to have a minimum of five. Mm. And there was one that was questionable. So if you don't have it, they move on to another district. Yeah. The way the organization works. So I don't know how many, if that is going to go through or not. Oh, yeah, school buses, so. that's another major problem we're finding out because now they're talking about making them have seat belts I've been talking about that for a while yeah it's just difficult to try to and you know get the kid pick the kids up get them to school and do all that within a timely manner especially when you get to the little kids you, you know, know and we'll it, see if they mandate it I know for us it'll be a big expense if we have to add them on and so these monitors time. you know you get a monitor them because the yep. kids are I mean I know when I was riding bus five was that uh, bus five was the one from Dame school down to Runland and then, of course, bus four was another one that went from Dame down, and I got switched on the bus four after a while. But it was wild on those buses, because if you sat up back, that's where all the trouble was. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were th smoking up there, or they were, th the girls had made pizzas one, little pizzas one day, and the boys got a hold of them and started throwing them around up there. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. you, wouldn't you wouldn't want to sit up back there, or you'd get in trouble some one day, Somebody uh, crushed a stink bomb. Mm. And, oh, smell! The bus driver stopped the bus right there. It was up from Runlet, yep. was right on South Street. Stopped it, and he said, "Who did it?" Nobody, of course, had on up to it. Okay, bus guards, everybody, watch bus guard. He took him. And Monday morning, we all had to get down to see the principal. <laughs> They well, now they have. They uh, found out who did it. We don't have any uh, currently, but uh, now they make buses that have cameras. Yes. You pull the cap buses into the uh, parking lot, and wirelessly they download the data and store the uh, good. stuff. But as of right now, we do not have. So yeah. that's another expense and subscription, and yeah. So resource officer helps a lot too. Yeah. Right? We have one at the high school, and yeah. then we ha <coughs> have a truant officer as well. That's good. The, you know. Just for the whole district. Yeah. So. I, I, I don't know. And of course, you've got sp so many sports up there now. You've got to have them for men, for boys and girls. You can't just have them for the boys anymore. Yeah. You know, special needs. You've got yeah. to come up to code with that. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, it's very different. Very, it's a lot of different moving parts. I know. It, I don't know how you do it. I no, know it's how fun. they do it. It's fun. Oh, I'm sure it is. Working with the staff and the kids. I'll all tell you, though, if you're elementary teachers, you've mm -hmm. got one that I think is the best one I've seen, and that's Mr. Pike up there at Beaver Meadow. Mm -hmm. Oh, that man, I am telling you, the Grange Cross, we still do the dictionaries for the schools. But I'm telling you, that guy is just fantastic. And I said, boy. I'm sure he has an uh, uh, elegant way about him, but you know, bike went on. But um, he is just one of the best I've ever seen. I'm telling you, I'm I'd like to honor him because, but I'm telling you, he is just good. And the kids all seem to respond to him. I'm sure he's got a business streak, but you know. Yeah, they're all. There's a lot of those teachers, they're busy. This is like a sprint now. Well-deserved break when they hit the summer. You've got some Goes by so fast. I will so say fast. you've got some teachers that are not very friendly. But like I tell them, when I go, when I go there to, uh, I'm parked down there by your foot. But um, I, used, I always go in there and of course the teachers are trying to get them to be quiet. And I said, well, you know, when I went to school, Mrs. Guyman was the principal over here. 
And all she had to do was walk in that cafeteria and just kind of like the Cub boy. Scouts where they put up their fingers and everything. Oh boy. Every, boom, that's it. You got down. And she walked in that auditorium, a cafeteria. That was it. That's all she, and boy, you didn't hear a, a noise. <laughs> Kids just knew that if you whistled or they coughed or something, you better have a good reason because she wanted it quiet and they knew it too. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, you had a couple of teachers who thought nothing of pulling you by the ear and slamming you against the wall and. Yep. Oh. That happened today. Thank that. goodness I didn't have any of those teachers. I mean, I had all nice ones. Yeah. In elementary, but yeah, could you imagine that though? No, no, today. If it does, you're, you're on Facebook, you're tweeted, and you're on uh, the media. It's just crazy. And some of it. I know. And. and or you know, all the facts truly there to make sure that the person is If you is have some properly. students who are in need of some things that didn't have money if, you know, or whatever, please let me know. Okay. We want to, we're doing this backpack, but not like they did for Channel 9 or whatever, but if you find you've got some needy students that didn't get a backpack or something with some things, please let me know. Okay. And yeah. we'll gladly do something. Okay. So... Well, I guess the ding ding comes on, so it's good having you, Jack. And I'm gonna miss having you at the polls standing this year. It's be up for re-election, but <laughs> I don't know. I've been done with that for a little while. I now. know you and I. I'll but, never forget that. We all thought you were one of the famous duns of New Hampshire, or Concord, and I don't think so. But, but you got in. No my more. tree hasn't. Yeah. I've been doing my work, but so far it hasn't reached to uh, New Hampshire. It reached to uh, Massachusetts. Yeah. I do. I had a uncle. And aunt down there, and they passed. They didn't have any kids, but yeah. So oh, good. Well, if you have any questions from Jack Dunn, give him a call over there at the superintendent's office, and he'll get the answer. If not, he'll go get it for you from the superintendent itself or someone. But he will get you the answer. So, and they're at the Millville School over there, at uh, right there, Liberty Street. So. Anyway, thanks to Ian Marks and my director, and hopefully support the schools as best you can. So, And with that in mind, I'm Dick Patton. Have a great day, enjoy the weekend, and we'll see you all soon on Around Town.